What comes to your mind when I say a self-driving car? Undoubtedly, the answer is Tesla, T-E-S-L-A for many. After all, Tesla has been taking pride in building next generation cars. But did you know that Mercedes has taken over Tesla in self-driving capabilities, boasting a level 3 self-driving capability while Tesla is stuck at just level 2? In fact, Waymo and Cruise are even further ahead with a level 4 autonomy. At least, that's what it says on paper. Is Mercedes, Waymo and Cruise really taking over Tesla in the self-driving game? Let's talk all about this topic today with specifically comparing Waymo and Tesla. Before we jump into the analysis, let's first understand what these various levels are. Here is the chart that explains various levels of autonomous driving courtesy Synopsys. As you can see, there are a total of six levels if you include level zero as well, which is no self-driving capabilities at all. The level of automation increases as we go from one to five, with level five being a complete self-driving. Levels one and two still require a fully attentive driver behind the wheel at all times. Level 3 can drive itself in certain conditions. Level 4 can self-drive within certain geo boundaries. Level 5 is fully autonomous in all circumstances with zero intervention. This is where we want to get in the future. The goal of all AV, I mean autonomous vehicle manufacturers. Now, the AV giant Tesla is still at level 2. Is that correct? The answer is yes. But Waymo and Cruise are at level 4, meaning they are fully autonomous within certain boundaries. Is that true? The answer is also yes. Let's first try and compare Tesla and Waymo. Before we do that, let's watch the self-driving cars in action. Here is Waymo driving itself or herself, however you call it, on San Francisco roads. In fact, I've done a separate video on this topic. I, I suggest you check it out. But here is a snapshot of Waymo driving herself. I get to talk to somebody if I do that. Now here, the car is making a turn. Traffic light is green, it started to move. The ride is actually pretty smooth. Yeah, it is a red light again. It is stopping at the red light. Hey driver, you're doing a great job, man. Now and here is Tesla driving herself again on California roads. I have spoke about it a few times in the past. I've done several videos on this topic. But again, here is a snapshot of Tesla driving herself. Now let's compare these two, starting with similarities. Both are electric cars, meaning they are powered by electricity. Both are self-driving cars, although at various levels of self-driving, both aspiring to be at level 5 autonomy at some point in the future. Unfortunately, the similarities end there with so many differences. So let's dig into those differences right now. Number one, Tesla is owned by Tesla Inc. and Waymo is owned by Google. You might know this, but that is one difference to begin with. Number two, the biggest difference is the fact that Tesla is commercially available for anyone to buy and own, whereas Waymo is owned and operated by Google. You cannot buy a Waymo if you want to, for example, but you can buy a Tesla as long as Tesla is available in the country you are currently living in or in the country you want to buy it in. Number three, the extension to this point is that Tesla is a retail car company, whereas Waymo is only a robo-taxi company, at least as of right now. Which means Waymo's are only operated as robo-taxis, whereas Tesla anyone can buy and drive on their roads. Number four, Tesla solely relies on cameras, meaning computer vision for self-driving, Waymo also uses LiDAR, stands for light detection and ranging technology that also uses infrared rays to detect objects around it. There are questions around Tesla's bold move to only use cameras, although Elon Musk seems to be pretty confident 
in enabling level 5 self-driving only using cameras. In fact, Tesla used to have other sensors, but not anymore. This is a controversial topic requiring a dedicated session, so we shall dig into it separately. Now, coming to the next difference, difference number five. As we spoke earlier, Tesla is officially, again, officially at level two autonomy, while Waymo cruises to level four autonomy. To remind, level two requires a fully attentive driver behind the wheel at all times, whereas level four can self-drive herself within certain geo boundaries, meaning in a specific region. As promised, now let's take this particular point and try to analyze it. Why is Tesla at level two, whereas Waymo could cruise to level four? Here is the point. Comparing Tesla and Waymo is like comparing apples and pineapples. They both have apple in them, meaning they both are electric and fully autonomous aspiring. But the comparison is not fair and mainly the levels they are at is not a testament to their self-driving capabilities per se. Let me explain. As we discussed earlier, their business models are different. In fact, completely different. Tesla sells their cars to the masses and Waymo only focuses on robotaxis. So it's not only easier, but also makes sense for Waymo to geo-restrict their fleet meaning limit them to a certain city and enable fully autonomous driving without a driver within those limits, which is the definition of level four autonomy. Waymo has done exactly that. Once you focus on a certain city, you can train your AI extensively on those particular roads, specific driving patterns, specific climatic conditions, especially how to behave in those conditions, etc 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 the whole training of the ai becomes much 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 easier and you can do that very 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 effectively you can also deploy a support crew in that particular region to help with any exceptions and failures making it easier for you to get the license to operate again in that region at level four autonomy again you train your car extensively to drive in that region and you concentrate your support staff in that particular region. Now, if you come to Tesla, let me remind you that it is for the masses. Level 4 autonomy becomes extremely difficult, if not impossible for Tesla. Well, even if it's possible, it doesn't make a lot of sense. For example, let's say you want to enable level 4 autonomy for Tesla in San Francisco within the same boundaries Waymo runs. Does it really make sense for any Tesla driver to drive their car on their own or maybe with the assistance of autopilot as in level two autonomy to get all the way to San Francisco and just use self-driving within the city limits? It doesn't make a lot of sense. If you live in the city, it may make sense though, but many living in the cities like San Francisco don't even own a car. They rely on taxis and guess what? That's where robo taxis like Waymo make sense as they are doing today. So if you want to achieve level four autonomy for Tesla, you need to start expanding the geo boundaries and for it to make real sense, you should start to include wide areas altogether. For example, level four autonomy in the entire Bay Area or level four autonomy in entire Austin, Texas area or in the Sacramento area. That makes more sense. Now, the larger the boundaries are, more difficult it will become to train the AI model on all circumstances and to provide the support required in case of failures or abnormalities. If the boundaries start to grow, you might as well achieve level five autonomy. It may actually be easier to focus all the efforts on that instead of trying to attack region by region. Again, just maybe. You just have to analyze the pros and cons of all the options thoroughly and make a decision. But in my opinion, you might as well focus on achieving level five autonomy. Now, I want to leave you with two points. Number one, reaching true level five autonomy will be extremely challenging to almost impossible, at least in the near future. When I say near future, I'm referring to years, not necessarily decades. But why? 
because a true level 5 requires a car to drive itself anywhere and in any conditions without a driver. Keeping abnormal weather conditions aside, especially those extreme conditions when it's impossible to drive such as snowstorms etc. But a true level 5 autonomous car should be able to drive anywhere, meaning anywhere in the world. That would be extremely challenging for various reasons, for beginners. The traffic rules would be different in different countries. Some don't even follow traffic rules. The infrastructure around the world is not the same, especially not what an AV requires. The political landscapes play a significant role as well. So we may have to settle with level 5 autonomy within a country or a set of countries. You can call it level 4 autonomy within geo boundaries expanded to cover an entire country or a set of countries. Now, the biggest question in everybody's mind brings me to point number two. Is Tesla ready for level 4 autonomy similar to Waymo? Having experienced it not just as a passenger but a driver multiple times behind the wheel, I truly believe it is ready from its capabilities perspective. It will be a matter of tightening some loose ends including more training on the roads and conditions of a certain city similar to what Waymo does and providing the support staff for any exception handling this is probably what Tesla's upcoming robo-taxis will do. Again, I believe Tesla is totally ready with the technology to do so. All it needs to do is to geofence an area, meaning choose a city, dedicate a fleet to run as robo-taxis, train that fleet extensively to operate in that city, etc, etc, etc. I'm looking forward to what Elon Musk has to say in August. As he said, a robot taxi announcement is upcoming. Are you looking forward to it as well? Do you think Tesla is ready to run a robot taxi? Do you think self-driving cars are the future? Or do you think we are just wasting our efforts trying to build them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.